the wind is uh, off and on. Yep, this is real. Hopefully I survive the night. guys, Nigel here. Thanks for tuning in. Drove about two hours to get here and I'm here and it's snowing and it's awesome. I think it's about time I walk up a mountain and spend the night at the top. Stick with me. Let's go. Okay guys, I'm ready to go. Let's go. I strip down. It's always important to wear layers. Strip down once you start to sweat. Cool off. You don't want to be sweating in uh, winter weather. I'll tell you that much. Uh, I might even have a uh, chocolate bar or a uh, protein bar right now. Or maybe I'll save it. But either way, I'm taking a break. Ah. I'll have a couple bites now. Mm. Mm. All right, break time's over. I'm cooled down. Man, I love it up here. So nice. All right, let's do a little tree identification here. Let's see if you can guess what this is, just by its uh, branches. And you know what? I'll show you the bark as well. No, it's not a birch. It's uh, my favorite tree, a cedar. Doesn't have the uh, the needles, but you can. Uh... Ooh, 
you can almost smell uh, the distinctive smell the cedar has, and of course the uh, the strip bark. The natives used to use uh, cedars to make their canoes. It's a softer wood, so it made it easier to hollow out. And uh, I suppose it took a while for the uh, for the wood to get waterlogged as well. <clears throat> So something, uh, so a little bit of history for you in the Pacific Northwest. Check out this view. That's uh, Squamish down there. And, uh, Right there, that's the chief. It's a nice little hiking uh, mountain. So you can see uh, the snow line right there. Obviously I'm a little bit above that. So if you uh, maybe go up a little, you know, a half a fingernail or whatever above the tree line. That's probably where I am in this direction. You know, another thing you got to watch out for when you're uh, hiking or skiing on a mountain, obviously is avalanches, especially after some fresh fallen snow. Huh. Yeah, check this out. So you got fresh snow, fresh snow, and then right here, a, uh, a layer of uh, ice or uh, pack snow. If there's an, another layer of ice or pack snow, or if it starts to rain and it crusts over over top of this uh, fluffy snow, that's when avalanches happen. Usually, uh, they say slopes of 45 and even 30 degrees can produce avalanches. That last part I read in the survival book. Look at me. Nice. That was unexpected. A little bit of blue sky. It's, uh, it's a little snowy, eh? I'm going to stay away from slopes and I want to find a nice uh, clump of smaller trees so I can uh, set up shelter. Okay, so I'm probably going to head down that way. Um, it's away from any slopes and it looks like it might be protect protected from the wind. And that's going to be very important for uh, my setup. You'll see that in a moment. Short break. Found myself a little cluster of trees that I'm uh, hiding out in. You know, this place would be all right for a, uh, a little quick shelter. But you got to think about uh, stuff like tree breaks. There's a lot of snow on these trees. Pretty light snow, but add some. Uh, heavier snow or freezing rain to the equation and uh, you could find yourself 
covered in trees. Oh, feels good to get up here. Forecast tonight is uh, snow and more snow. Love snow. Still looking for a suitable place for my shelter. My main concern tonight, of course, will be the wind. I've just got a tarp tonight. So what I'm looking out for is areas in the snow that are eroded. That tells me that uh, wind frequents a certain area. It can, it can also tell me the uh, prevailing winds in a certain spot. So that could be useful for me. But uh, I see a bit of wind erosion right where I am now. So I'm gonna keep going. Oh, hey there. I think I found the place just in behind you there. I've been looking for uh, like an hour or so to try and find a place, but enough of that. I think this is as good a place as any to uh, set up shop. Let me uh, show you what I'm seeing and uh, give you a tour of the, the new home. The uh, feature that I'm kind of looking at here is these two very small cedar trees and above it there's not a whole lot that's gonna fall and uh, crush me unless an entire tree comes down uh, this tree uh, right there see it's not very tall that's maybe uh, 30 feet and there's not a whole lot of branches that are uh, huge that will come down and I'm clear of this see that tree if I was right right under that one that's trouble but uh, I think I'll be fine here. The wind is coming from uh, from that direction. So I'm gonna have to build the tarp uh, kind of as a block. We'll, uh, we'll see how that turns out. But anyway, I'm gonna drop my bag here and uh, get started on my shelter. Pretty big, pretty big tarp. It's about a, a, I think it's a 10 by 10 nylon. And I got a whole whack load of paracord. Hopefully it's enough. Ow! Frick. Paracord across the trees. Oh, she's windy. Or blustery. All right, so the idea is, what I'm trying to do, is create sort of like a C. So that little part at the top, which I'll show you in a second, is sort of like an awning. And then I'll, I'll have sort of a, a backing for the wind and uh, snow. I'm hoping the wind doesn't change directions. As you just saw, the, uh, the wind was kicking the uh, tarp this way, so uh, that's a good sign. And then I'll have the bottom part of the C as sort of like a floor mat, uh, so I'm not sleeping right on the snow. No need to get fancy with knots, just do whatever works. Wind. 
Remember that knot that I showed you? Well, I'm going to do it again. loops and then this one and your last loop you're going over both and then back through the hole and then pull opposite way and there we go and you got a nice knot that you can uh, tighten which is very good for setting up tarps well Here's what I got so far from my shelter. So I had to lower it a bit because <clears throat> I realized that my tarp actually isn't that big. So um, I've got the awning basically done. Now I had the convenient uh, thing of a big tree right here so I could tie, tie off the line there. But the other end, look at this. Nothing nothing to tie off of it's just snow what you can do is what's called a snow snow anchor let me show you so there's the line and I've got it tied to this little uh, stick or piece of wood and what I've done here uh, is I've actually dug a little hole or a trench kind of long uh, lengthwise and what you do is you just plop this right in the hole And then you uh, cover it up with snow. And stop it down. Uh, and that'll hold good and well good and well. That'll hold well, I hope. Sheesh. So this is home for tonight, assuming I make it through the night. Wind's uh, gusting as you can see. Um, I'm losing a lot of space with this back part here because it's getting blown towards me. And even if it wasn't, um, you know, that's a lot of space that I could uh, win back. What I can do though, is I can, uh, if I could show you here, there's no actual loop or anything to put a rope. So what I can do is put like a, a little wad of something and uh, stuff it in there and then from the other side tie a rope around it, kind of like a button, and then pull it back. So I was looking through my, my old army jacket and look what I found. This is from a ration packs. This thing's like 10 years old. I think I'm gonna cook it up tonight and uh, have myself some uh, Kool-Aid tea. Not gonna do that. Not gonna do it. So I've got the shelter about where I wanted it to be. The, uh, the tarp is fairly set up. I've got the uh, nice awning here and then a nice floor mat as well. It's protecting me from the wind. It's coming from this way. That's where the, the back end is, obviously. And then what I did was I got some boughs, cut them off, and uh, blocked an area where a lot of snow was blowing in. And then I also dug down because the, uh, the sleeping area was a little uh, uneven. That's where my feet will be. So now I will show you what I have in terms of gear. Okay, so my gear, starting with the clothing real quick, um, pretty much same as last time. Well, actually exactly the same as last time. Uh, these uh, Gore-Tex socks are, uh, are killer. And let's see what we got here. So just a random bag of stuff. Scarf. Got my pot and dinner inside. I've got steak and uh, more potatoes this time. PJs. And here is uh, 
my sleeping bag, my second sleeping bag. I got some spice for my steak. The canteen. Okay, I'm gonna have to block that side too. Obviously my snowshoes, my tarp, and my, uh, my sleeping pad. Here, that's what I'm sitting on, I'll show it to you. Same one as last time. And outside sleeping bag in, inside the roll. Uh, what else do I got here? Obviously my knife, just a basic Fisker's axe or hatchet. Orange garbage bag. Maybe this this is what I'll use to uh, cover the other end up. Got my stove. I'm actually gonna cook up some coffee soon, so you'll see that in a moment. And uh, my gas for the stove. Got a small one and a big one, big one just like last time. This one's almost out, so. Two methods of uh, fire making lighter and then a fire uh, striker that's a big one headlamp for those spooky nights and i'm pretty sure tonight's going to be a little spooky first time in a tarp folks and uh, yeah that's it man boys and girls that's it <sighs> i just got to get used to the fact that there's going to be snow on everything Alright, I'm going to relax for a bit and then uh, cook something up. Some coffee. Wind's actually picked up a little bit here. It's got me worried. I'll have to beef up, beef up my shelter a bit more. I've already done a, a little bit more uh, on the sides there. A few more boughs. Right there. And just uh, waiting for my water to boil. I've actually discovered a new way of making uh, coffee. It's just uh, putting the grinds just right in there. Right in with the water. And if they're coarse enough, they'll actually just sink to the bottom and you can just, you know, drink uh, the top layer of liquid, the top layer of liquid. You don't have to mess around with all those filters and whatnot, eh? Ah, oh, man, this is strange not having a tent, I'll tell you that much. Everything's just blowing around and in. This coffee is going to feel nice though. Oh, she's a boiling. That, that coffee is brewing. Ow, that's hot. Oh, and the gas is almost out too. Man, this little tank is awesome. It's lasted uh, two steaks, one mashed potatoes, and one coffee. No, two coffees. It's still going. Now that's value. Value. Ah. It's uh, starting to get a little bit dark. It's about four o'clock. Gets dark around uh, 4.35. Soon it will be nighttime. Oh boy. All right, let's see how she tastes. Ah! Just kidding. It is hot though. Oh baby, hold together now. Hold together. Oh 
Oh, mmm. Coffee, coffee, coffee. It's a storm out there, folks. What have I got myself into? A boatload of fun, I think. Ooh. That's nice. This is retarded. <clears throat> Sure hope this tarp holds up. Ideally, what I would want to get is a, uh, a way stronger ridge. Not this string is going to do nothing if anything falls. I drink coffee annoyingly. Mm. So before it gets dark, <clears throat> I want to give you an overview of, of my little uh, tarp shelter here. Here's the back end. This is the uh, the side that's getting hit by a lot of wind. It's actually coming right through here, straight through here and uh, swirling around through there. So I beefed up this, this side with some boughs. Part of the awning, attach to that uh, tree. That's a weird looking tree, hey? I think it broke at the top and is just leaning forward. Could make a nice little animal den. Ah. Here's the front. That's where I'm going to try and sleep tonight. Sorry for the shaking here. Wow, I'm really shaky. And here's the other side. Whoa, almost tripped. So that side's also beefed up a little bit. Got the the uh, back side tapered out and attached to uh, little pegs that I made. The other end, you can kind of see it there. And there it is, my own little shanty town. Welcoming, isn't it? Mm. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, dinner prepared. I'm pretty hungry. And the wind's still howling. Let's calm down a bit for the time being. I gotta get some better lighting. This headlamp is uh, no bueno. All right, boys and girls, we got steak on the menu tonight. Steak right on the snow. We get some spice on there. It's a uh, spicy pepper medley. Might even cut that in half. It's a smaller pot. I've also got, got potatoes and I'll uh, cook those after, I guess. One pot means... Uh, eating things one at a time. Uh, so there we go, two pieces of uh, meat. Add some snow in there just to... Oh man, that smells good.
And now we wait. Almost ready. Sizzling or boiling. It's all the beef broth in there. Holy. She smells ready. And she looks ready. See if she tastes ready. Let's see what we got. Make sure I don't drop the broth on my bed. All right, let's cut her up. Ooh, that's She's well done. Put that back in to heat up. back in the pot. See how she tastes here. Oh, it's hot. Mmm. A hot meal, man. In the outdoors, nothing quite like it. Careful with this blade. Mm. Wow. Just uh, <clears throat> just chilling out. I finished my potatoes. I decided not to film that because I'm running low on power, believe it or not. It's not even 8 o'clock yet. The wind is uh, off and on. I decided to uh, tie down the front end of my, sh my awning because the, uh, the wind was changing directions for a bit, blowing snow right <coughs> right into me. Yep, this is real. Just having a few, uh, a few kicks of uh, bourbon here. Uh, this canteen was a Christmas g gift from my buddy Walter. Actually, my brother-in-law. It's working out good. Yummy. Just getting my bedding set up. I waited until the last moment to do it because I didn't want uh, snow and uh, water to get everywhere. It's gonna happen anyways, but may as well uh, reduce the exposure time. So I've got a uh, makeshift bi bivy bag. It's the orange gar garbage bag. I've got it wrapped around where my feet will be. And so I've got two, uh, two sleeping bags. My feet are getting pretty cold, and my, my pants are uh, getting a little bit wet, so I'm going to change out of uh, these snow pants, hang, hang them up on the, the cross string that's holding up my tarp, and maybe crawl into bed and sort of wait, wait out this uh, wind and snow for the next 10 hours. All right, here I am. In my little cocoon, this uh, this tarp is just blowing up against my face, so I'm just gonna have to make do. I'll uh, see you guys in the morning. I'm quite tired. Uh, it's time to. Hopefully, I survive the night. Good night, everybody.
Okay guys, it's morning. It's about 8 o'clock. <clears throat> the weather's really come in. It's uh, blowing really strong. Just a quick look at my shelter. Sorry. The wind uh, blew snow drifts right into my uh, tarp. I don't know if you can see that, but that's an entire like, three, two or three feet of snow up against the back of my, my shelter. So I'm gonna stop filming for a bit and uh, head on down, pack up and head on down. Maybe I'll catch you guys at the bottom. Peace. Ah, I made it, I'm back. Sorry I couldn't bring you down with me or bring you along for the tear down of the camp, but it was a blizzard up there. I really just needed to pack up and bring myself down. It was kind of dangerous because all the snow had washed away my footprints, so I really needed to know which direction to go, which I did. It wasn't really a problem. But if I, if I was farther out or uh, was disoriented, I could have been in some trouble. Uh, my battery also ran out of power on the way down, so I couldn't do any filming when the weather calmed down. But as you can see outside, it uh, hasn't changed much. Anyways guys, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.